the R5C has just received its newest firmware and it's added a bunch of new features that look to make the camera even better. We've been using the R5C in our studio as a behind the scenes camera and our main piece to camera setup for a while now. So we are really excited for this new update. So in today's video, we want to take a look through the new updates and see how these new changes and features work and perform. So let's get into it. With the impressive still and video capabilities the R5C has, it's obviously aimed at being a killer hybrid camera, and it is. However, one complaint that many people have had has been how long it takes to switch between photo and video mode using the top dial. On previous firmware, it did take quite a while to switch between them, as you are effectively restarting and booting the camera up again in a whole new menu system when switching between the two. Unlike the R6 Mark II, which switches incredibly quickly as it doesn't need to do that. With this new update, switching from video mode to photo mode takes just under three seconds and going from photo to video mode takes just over three seconds. This is a massive improvement over the previous firmware, especially when going from video to photo. For hybrid shooters wanting to switch between modes on the fly, this new update will be a really welcomed addition as it really does make switching much faster. Another issue that people have had with the R5C is powering the thing in its video mode. And in this new firmware, Canon have actually tried to help a little bit with a new power saving mode. However, it is quite limited. You can find it in the system setup tab, but it will only be possible in a few specific modes, which are basically everything apart from what is listed here. When you switch it on, you can see that with a fresh LPE6 battery, the time remaining goes from 66 minutes to roughly 85 minutes. An extra 20 minutes is good, but obviously this is only in these specific modes. But if you're like us and use the 4K XF ABC mode a lot, this will definitely be very helpful. However, this is really only a small improvement. And if you want to use this camera for a full day shoot, I would really suggest using some kind of third party power solution. There are a bunch of options on the market now that may work for you, but it really depends on how you want to rig your camera. We often run the camera pretty stripped down with a USB-C cable running out of the camera into a battery in a bag or pocket, but there are definitely better ways of getting longer battery life. I'm really hoping that Canon continue to push their firmware more and more, and we get even better performance in the future. Canon has also improved the autofocus in several ways with this new update. First off is the variable tracking frame. This essentially adapts the size of the tracking box when you select a subject for it to track. You will need the camera autofocus AF frame set to whole area, and you can then tap to select your tracking subject and as that changes size in the frame, the tracking box will change to fit it. This update should translate into the camera being better at recognizing what you're tapping on and then translating that to better autofocus performance. Next is the ability to detect the back of subjects heads when tracking a human subject. You can toggle this in the face tracking menu on the page five of the first tab of the menu under head detection mode. From our testing, it seems to be really good at detecting the back of heads so you can continue focusing even without a face for it to recognize in the frame. This is an awesome addition that other camera systems have had for a while now, so it's great to see and will definitely be helpful in run and gun situations. Lastly, you can now use the control ring on your chosen RF mount lens, EF adapter, or the control dial on the camera to switch between subjects in your frame. This could be good to use if you are in a busy environment like an event and don't want to tap on the back of your camera to switch between subjects on the fly. Canon has also added a new custom picture profile called Canon 709, which was first added to the C70. This uses the Canon 709 gamma curve paired with the neutral color matrix. If we look at the curve of this new profile compared to YDR, we can see that with Canon 709, there is more contrast in the midtones with them rolling off towards the shadows more. We can also see the highlights holding a little more saturation than the YDR clip. However, we think that the highlights aren't handled quite as nicely as they are with YDR. You can see the whites being pulled down in the Canon 709 clip, which results in the highlights looking a bit worse than the YDR clip. I would say that the Canon 709 profile looks like a good option for people wanting a more contrasty and saturated image straight out of camera with no processing in post whatsoever. YDR is a good middle ground between this new profile and C-Log. It's a bit flatter and less saturated, but from our testing handles highlights better. It will just need maybe that little extra pop of saturation and contrast in post, which we normally do when processing YDR rushes. And then of course you have C-Log there, 
when you want to shoot log for the most dynamic range and flexibility in post possible. With this, they also added the CMT709 profile under your view assists, which is basically the Canon 709 LUT if you want to monitor it, but not record it when using C-Log. Canon have also released the CMT709 LUTs, which we've put a download link to in the description below. The next feature that Canon added is a digital teleconverter. And this adds the ability to punch in on the image 1.5, 2, 2.5, and three times. This isn't possible in RAW, which isn't too surprising, but is possible in all of the compressed formats. You can still capture in any chosen resolution, but there will be a hit in image quality as you are effectively cropping in on the sensor resolution. One thing that we noticed as well is when you toggle this on, it limits the autofocus you can use. You can't toggle any face tracking or anything. It's just a basic center frame autofocus. You can't even move the frame box around, it's just in the center, though you can tweak the speed and responsiveness of the autofocus in the menus. This addition could be really useful for a range of reasons. And as with any digital zoom, you will have to balance your need for zoom with the image quality trade-offs of cropping into your sensor. The R5C already has some excellent exposure tools built in, but with this new firmware, you now have the ability to tailor the size and position of your waveform or vector scope. You can now change their size between normal and two times, and you can do this in the menu or by simply tapping the waveform or vector scope on your monitor. You can also change the position of them on your screen and the opacity as well. This means you can really dial in how you want them to look depending on your personal preference. Canon has also changed how fine you can be with your adjustments when using the clear scan shutter mode. This would be good for really dialing out flicker as much as possible when shooting with difficult LED sources like a LED wall or monitor. With how popular LED volumes have become and how many times we have seen screens and shots, this is definitely a very smart update from Canon. There have also been a few smaller changes as well, such as the ability to monitor four channels of audio on your meters. You can also now magnify while recording when shooting in 8K in MP4, unless you are outputting 4K via HDMI. And you can also zoom into either the left or right eye when shooting with the VR lens that Canon make for the R5 and the R5C. They have also added compatibility with the 0.71 focal reducer, which you may want to use if you want an extra stop of light while still getting full frame field of views. Though there are definitely negatives to doing this, it at least adds the option if you want to use EF lenses in this way. They have also added support for a range of their modern cinema glass, which includes the incredibly popular CN8. This firmware is available to download now on Canon's website, links to which I've put in the description below. The R5C is coming up to a year and a half old, and it's seen a good few firmware additions over that time and it's still one of the best hybrid cameras on the market. We use it all the time and love the image that it produces. Yes, powering the thing when we are using it as a behind the scenes camera is really frustrating, but we work around that as it can take such great stills and video in just one package, which means we don't need to carry two separate cameras. So if you're in the market for a powerful hybrid workhorse, the R5C is definitely worth considering. Anyway, let us know what you think of this new firmware for the R5C and if you have any further questions down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a like and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching.